Hello students, this is Dr. Gonzalez. I hope you're having a good day or a good night when you're watching this video. Uh, today we're going to talk about the following topics and let's just go ahead and get started. Now let's go over the specific structures that we're going to find in each one of those subdivisions or small triangles within the anterior triangle. We're going to start with a submandibular or digastric triangle. The boundaries for this one is the anterior and posterior bellies of the digastric muscle and the inferior border of the mandible, as I mentioned before. Most of its floor is going to be formed by the mylohyoid muscle. And the contents of this triangle is going to be the submandibular gland here. That's the sub submandibular or salivary gland. The facial artery and vein. Here's the facial vein. Here's the facial artery. The hypoglossal nerve. Here's a branch of the hypoglossus. And the myelohyoid nerve and vessels. Next is the carotid triangle. Remember that the boundaries is the posterior belly of the digastric, the superior belly of the omohyoid, and the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. The contents within this triangle is gonna be, for example, the arteries such as the common carotid artery, which is this one right here. The initial segments of the external and internal carotid arteries, as you can see right here. The veins includes the internal jugular and some of its tributaries. And the nerves includes the vagus nerve, which is this one right here, the accessory nerve, the ansa cervicalis, the internal and external laryngeal nerves, that's another part of the ansa, the cervical branch of facial nerve, and transverse cervical. Another triangle, remember, is the muscular triangle. And here, the boundaries will include the superior belly of the mohyoid, the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, and the anterior midline of the neck. The contents of the muscular triangle includes the sternohyoid, the sternothyroid, and the thyrohyoid muscles. There's also a couple of structures that we call the viscera of the neck. For example, the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. Here's the thyroid gland. The larynx also, which is in this area over here behind these structures or posterior to these structures and the trachea. And lastly, we got the submental triangle, which is the only on pair neck triangle. The boundaries include the anterior bellies of the digastric muscles and the body of the hyoid bone. The floor is going to be the mylohyoid muscles and the contents of this triangle include the submental lymph nodes and small veins that join to form the anterior jugular veins, which is this one right here. Let's go over the blood vessels. We're going to start with the common carotid artery, which is the one you can see right here in light blue. The right common carotid artery originates from the brachiocephalic trunk, which is basically this structure that you're going to see right here, posterior to the right sternoclavicular joint. Then the left common carotid artery specifically originates from the aortic arch in the superior mediastinum. Here's the aortic arch and back to that common carotid artery. So the common carotid arteries ascend in the neck within the carotid sheath to the upper border of the thyroid cartilage where it divides into an external, which is this one, and internal carotid arteries. Within the carotid sheath, uh, the internal jugular vein lies lateral to the common carotid artery and the vagus nerve is going to lie between the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein posteriorly. 
as part of the carotid arteries, we have an area that we call the carotid sinus and the carotid body. So this is the terminal part of the common carotid artery and the beginning of the internal carotid artery, which shows a localized dilation, which we call the carotid sinus. So that's gonna be, if we look at this picture, that's gonna be this structure right here. So it's a wall that contains numerous nerve endings, mainly derived from the glossopharyngeal nerve, which are sensitive to changes in blood pressure. So we call them baroreceptors and pressure receptors. And so the carotid body, it's going to be an oval shape and a highly vascular structure with a few millimeters in size located posterior to the carotid bifurcation uh, or uh, between the internal and external carotid arteries. It is attached to the uh, or partly embedded in the vessels adventitia, which is a layer of tissue here. And it contains special nerve endings, mainly from the glossopharyngeal nerve, which respond to chemical changes in the blood composition, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide levels and blood pH. So these are called chemoreceptors. So the carotid sinus and the body are important in reflex control of the heart rate, blood pressure, and respiratory rate and depth. Now, within the area of the neck, after the common carotid, we're gonna have the external carotid, as I said before. And this one begins at the upper border of the thyroid cartilage. It ascends in the carotid triangle. As it leaves the carotid triangle, it passes deep or medial to the posterior belly of the digastric and stylohyoid muscles. And it terminates within the substance of the parotid gland posterior to the neck of the mandible and dividing into a superficial, temporal, and maxillary arteries. Here's superficial, temporal, and here's maxillary arteries. The branches include, for example, uh, the superior thyroid, lingual, and facial arteries. These are anterior branches. Here's, for example, superior thyroid and lingual. The posterior branches include the occipital and posterior auricular arteries. This is posterior auricular and occipital. The medial branch includes the ascending pharyngeal artery. And the terminal branches includes the superficial temporal and maxillary arteries. Here's a superficial temporal and here's maxillary artery. Another branch that comes out of the external carotid artery is the superior thyroid artery. This is usually the first branch of the external carotid artery and it descends almost vertically, accompanied by external laryngeal nerve. And this is to reach the superior pole of the lobe of the thyroid gland and it contributes to the blood supply of that gland. It also gives us a superior laryngeal artery, which pierces the thyrohyoid membrane with the internal laryngeal nerve. Another artery, it's the lingual artery, which is this one right here. And it originates from the external carotid artery on the opposite tip of the greater horn of the hyoid bone. The lingual artery initial segment is crossed superficially or laterally by the hypoglossal nerve, and it passes deep to the hyoglossus muscle to supply the tongue. Another artery is the facial artery. This originates immediately above the lingual artery or sometimes by a common trunk with it. It passes medial or deep to the posterior belly of the digastric muscle, stylohyoid, and a submandibular gland. And then it curves around the inferior border of the mandible, as you can see right there anterior to the masseter to enter the face, which is the area where its pulse can be palpated. And it's the main source of blood supply to the face, and it also supplies blood to the palatine tonsils and submandibular gland. We also have an occipital artery posteriorly. This one originates from the posterior aspect of the external carotid artery near the level of the origin of the facial artery, as you can see right there. It then passes posteriorly and superiorly 
and then deep or medial to the posterior belly of the digastric and the mastoid process here on the temporal bone and then it reaches the back of the scalp um, its terminal branches accompany branches of the greater occipital nerve and it supplies the posterior part of the scalp. The posterior auricular artery, it's an artery that arises from the posterior aspect of the external carotid artery above the occipital artery. And then it passes posteriorly and superiorly to reach the notch between the external acoustic meatus over here and the mastoid process. And it supplies the auricle and the scalp above and behind the ear.